So I woke up and I just, I feel so strongly. Anybody that's paying ties to the church system of this age, and, and by church system, I mean, I went to a church, for instance, called Awake, a man named Matthew. Um, honestly, Bob Jones had been there, okay? It's like, it was in that circle. And that man was so clear and transparent with his finances. Like he laid out the entire year, like he, he went together through it with the flock because he, he wanted to be completely on page. Like the, I'm not, this is, the, you guys have entrusted this unto the Lord and I wanna be found faithful. And so he literally had it broken down, everything that was spent by the church for all to see. Do you ever see that? In American Christianity, there's not the Baptist churches don't do that. The Presbyterian, the West Lane, the IHOPs of the world, the Bethels of the world, none of them are transparent on that level. And I tell you, they're not transparent on that level for a reason that people have not realized. And I think that at this hour of so much corruption that's been done with the finance of God, it behooves everybody if you want to give a tithe unto the Lord, I bless and respect that. Even though there is no obligation under the new covenant, let's be clear, give from the generosity of your heart. But I, I myself, have honored the tithe. I believe there is a truth in the good dates back to Melchizedek, not to Bill Johnson, okay? Not to Benny Hinn, all right? And so until we learn to give from that vein, where you sell what you have that day and you take your money and you fill the pockets of a blind man you know i feel like people have totally forgotten what the tithe was even intended for as far as the undefiled religion of caring for widows and orphans you show me let, let them be transparent like pastor matt was who does take care helped the orphans and who has brought wells together and, and done done many great things let me see these men that are on the high stages be the first to show us how well they have stewarded the finance of Christ, of God's own, God's own, because that's what you're held to account for. So don't, don't give unless you know what you give to. There's no, there's no more room to give unless you know exactly what you're giving to. Don't just give to men who, who banner the name of Jesus and who have brought great harm to his kingdom and to many in the flock, i.e. Mike Bickle and others like him. I'll throw it into you because it's not really worth whole videos anymore. Like I kind of left off the IHOP thing with the Matthew Candler. I felt a sense of love for him. I connected one to his struggle. I could feel there was pruning going on, and I'm I'm just not. I don't seek to just criticize genuine brothers. You know what I mean? It's not in my heart to do. And so you know, I gave that card. But as I've kind of watched it unfold, it's becoming clear that there, at least. Isaac is, is kind of falling under his protege uh, with Mike and Lenny and Stewart as far as just whitewashing over things. Um, in my view, like total glossary look at scripture and not really taking into context. Like for instance, he used this whole speech on Matthew 18 last time about, you know, the wicked servant that um, had the 10,000 talents and he was forgiven and he, he didn't extend that forgiveness on to the other fellow servant. I think what the, the key thing he missed in that whole thing is that the other fellow servant came to him, fell on his face, um, begged to make things right, to have a little more time to make things right and to do right by his brother. He wanted to work things out with him. He brought a spirit of repentance to the table. And then the one who was wicked says, no, throw him to jail. We're not, there's no forgiveness for him he's he until he pays everything he's in this this sort of mentality so like that's that's where that came from there's a transactional way of giving out forgiveness and the transactional way means that i'll forgive someone if they commit to change in the way that i believe that they need to so they have to really see with clarity, the wrongs that they've done to me, 
They have to fully understand it and they have to commit to change. And then I have to see them be able to change in order to forgive them. I mean, at risk of just stating the obvious, like the message of Christianity has always been, we forgive others even when they don't deserve it. We forgive even our enemies. So everyone knows that, even non-Christians, which is why this message feels so contrived to me because it's being spoken into the context of Mike and what's happened. Even this was spoken after the context of Misty too, you know, but that doesn't mean we support predators in his house. Okay. There's a difference between personal forgiveness of your heart, not carrying around like bitterness or anger for years. That is a very different thing than supporting predators they are wolves in sheep's clothing and his house. Like that's a whole nother message. And so like at, at you claim to be a shepherd, Isaac, of these people of IHOP. Okay, well, as a shepherd, as a fellow shepherd who shepherds smaller flocks, I will tell you, you have no right to put on the flock an issue of their personal forgiveness in relation to the unrepentant, hardened, shepherd that you set yourself up as a protege of. So some people have asked, you know, about the, the Misty news and it's definitely taken me a minute to process. That was not something I was expecting to be completely forthwith. That was like a gut punch and even just, I'm still processing, honestly. I mean, when I came into this conversation in the Lou video, it was to recognize a leader in part that had done what was needed and recognizing where his life didn't line up to his personal life, to a message he was preaching to thousands of young people. And while it was totally left filled and not expected as far as this um, level with Misty, like you, you're certainly you're certainly called to the same standard. You need to come forward. You need to come forward, and you need to apologize to us from a sincere place. Gosh, I wish you would have just been more forthwith when you were struggling, like surely, wh where are the brothers in your house? I would like to know. It's clear there's no fathers in the house and that Mike, when he was made aware, uh, like ducked his head and hung out in Florida and did nothing to defend and to speak up. And I'm sorry, my sister too has thought that her relationship was fine and well. And maybe you still think that and that y'all are just friends. But I tell you, as a brother who cared for my sister, my punches were not in vain, okay? And no, I'm not going to punch this old geezer guy. But my gosh, that is... Like, I see where the foot was on your neck now, Misty. And it certainly was not Alan Hood and Brian Kim or even, even my... Uh, unruly seeming stuff maybe like i my heart is for the truth misty and for you to live in the truth for you to live as a victorious one and this is not this this has to be brought into the light in the sense that like you know i'm i'm clearly praying for you that you would you would come clean with your heart this is, this is it, like, this is the, why? Why are we doing this for years? Like now it's been decades, I'm, I'm still here, I'm still sitting in this little room in Kansas City, Missouri, telling you what you tell me to tell you. Like, are you serious? <laughs> far as like throwing stones or anything I know everybody's processing but I just I feel that like I, I, I personally would like to hear from you Misty Edwards I have a lot that I could share 
about how I have been faithful to the cause of Christ that I have heard in your own heart over the years, but I don't think that um, I don't want to elevate myself here. So I mean, for me, this is like I don't I don't want to just fill the airwaves. I mean, I know you know I've been grateful to hear as far as like about the article and, and stuff like that, but I, I do think this is a time to hear from you, Misty. I don't think it's it's time for, for me to speak, even if I had great things to say, you know, I don't think that that's more important than hearing your heart. And so I invite you. And it does, I'm not talking about a personality. We are forerunners who are going to proclaim, we're going to prophesy, and we're going to declare. But if we don't live lifestyles of friendship with God in meekness and gentleness and servanthood and selflessness, then what have we become? Trying to get away Tell her she can't escape Whole damn world is a cage Whole damn world is a cage If you see her out there She's behind the wheel Driving getaway 